Hey folks, welcome to Reloved Guitars, The Garden. And here we have Morris and his sister having a bit of a play around. <laughs> yes, not so good. How's it going, Morris? Yeah? Okay. Out on the deck here we've got a comparison going on between a couple of guitars. And uh, they're both Harley Benton gold top copies. Spin them around. Now the obvious difference between the two of them. What are you doing? Oh you just found a nice place to sleep. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so the obvious difference between the two of these things is that um, that one over there has still got the scratch plate on and that one over there is mine from a year ago with the scratch plate gone. Um, but it's interesting because Hugh brought this one over for me to set up yesterday and the first thing I can tell about it is uh, it's a lot lighter. Same thickness um, but clearly can't be the same wood. Um, because it's much lighter than this, which has got the heft of a, a proper Les Paul weight, I think. And flies, go away. Um, the other thing that's noticeable straight away is that the fingerboard on here is not rosewood by the look of it. It's some sort of painted thing, and who knows what's under there. There's a bit of a red, reddish, well, there's a lighter wood underneath there, and chances are it's the original maybe the maple or eastern variant of the maple um, uh, painted over with something um, but it doesn't have quite such a nice look mine uh, from a year ago same price same place bought from Toman online uh, but mine has rosewood uh, the nut is just a one I, I had colored a different color and I've just fitted that so it's not it's not cleaned up properly but anyway um, but it's a different, a different uh, wood, and it's you know, clearly got some sort of rosewood, which makes it a nicer looking neck. The other thing I notice is that these have split post tuners, and on the back side they are a little bit kind of squarer. They, they look quite well manufactured, they're sort of quite precise. Um, but being split post, I find them, and maybe it's my imagination, but I find them quite reliable. Now on this one, you've got actually not only are they the standard sort of tuners what I can also see is that they're pulling quite strongly and um, downwards in their housing so they don't I'm not sure if they fit so brilliantly well in those uh, in the, in the um, holes and then the construction of these things are just a little bit less square a bit more rounded these look a bit more like the the Wilkinson deluxe or the Cluson Cluson deluxe things um, but as I say, it's a lighter guitar, and uh, I think Hugh, Hugh's contacted uh, Toman, and he's talked about, told, told them that he's not really impressed with the, the step down in quality um, since I bought mine a year ago. And as you can see, both guitars, um, well, certainly mine came really appallingly set up, so I had to work to a complete fret level and take care of a lot of the frets here and, and a good few of them the strings could go underneath the fret ends and catch um, which is not surprising when you consider how they're cut to uh, allow the fret to go over the edge of the binding but for example down here they're still quite sharp um, but eventually after working on it it was possible to get the uh, get the action set quite nicely and the thing is quite nice playing guitar. Hughes on the other hand felt quite nice straight out of the box as he brought it yesterday um, but uh, it's got all the same basic fret problems um, not as the, the frets here are not quite as scratchy as mine were when I got it uh, but they're still not perfect um, what Hugh has also brought for me to do uh, and attack the fact why while I'm here I'm going to just get the the other Hughes other one out. Just done. Hold on for a sec while I just go and fetch it. Okay, 
So here we have the other Harley Benton offering. And it's a Harley Benton cut in a, or designed in a 335 style. And uh, again, on first glimpse, you, you sort of see, well, that's a handsome looking sunburst thing. Um, but again, it suffers from the same sorts of problems. And I'm not really sure, in fact, Looking at this, it's hard to tell what the neck is. It's, it's darker, but it doesn't appear to be quite as dark as that one. Um, there are some interesting things about this, and, and Hugh's brought both of them for me to set up. Interesting thing about this one uh, is that from, from out of the box, it play, plays appallingly badly. Notes down here choked off. I wonder if I can give you a sample of how they sound. Well done really are poor. Oh, look at that. So generally speaking, pretty horrible. Um, the action I would say is about a millimetre and a half at the 22nd fret. Fret ends are not exactly sharp, they're not dangerous, but they don't feel very, they're not, they're not comfortably smooth. Um, there's something in here that's rattling around which I haven't quite discovered what it is yet. I will find it at some point. Oh. Very close, close. Oh, here it is, it's a piece of wood. My God, hang on, let's get this to come out. Come on, how'd you come? Quite a big chunk of wood, here it comes. Aha! Gift, special gift. A piece of uh, wood from the construction of this guitar. Mmm. <laughs> Encouraging. I just wanna shake out the rest of the parts that are, oh yeah, some more bits of wood coming out. Um, well, at least we've cured that particular rattle. Now, I think this, this neck will be fixable. But it is truly horrible from the outset. Um, and also, another thing on here, I don't know if you can see, but uh, it, oh dear. That switch is pretty loose. Anyway, as long as it works. Um, but the, this is quite incredible. The scratch plate on this guitar has been, looks like it's been cut badly by somebody who was very drunk while they were doing it. So I said to Hugh that I would take that off and uh, attempt to put round off some of those appalling uh, corners on it. I mean, what an awful shape. If you actually look the way it's cut out around the, the corner of the pickup there, uh, that's almost snap-tastic. But apart from that, and I would probably get rid of that, but apart from that, and the way that wires are sticking out everywhere, I don't think there's any reason why this shouldn't be quite good. Um, but, you know, straight out of the box, that's just... Imagine if you got that. So quite a bit of work to do on this um, and once it's done let's hope that it sounds and plays quite well. Um, what I've noticed and there's people have different views on these things but when I look at mine uh, or when I play mine it actually plays these pickups are really quite nice and a couple of people who just hate these things without really paying too much attention to them um, tell me that's rubbish they're total garbage and nobody could possibly like them but actually some musicians who are more respectful have uh, have um, commented on them and said actually they are surprisingly good even in, in their opinion so um, three Harley Benton beasties all of them requiring a lot of setup to get them playable that thing in particular um, hideous to play out of the box that thing there lower quality than the one a year ago which at the time that was 100 pounds this is still about 100 quid that was 
kind of just about worth it um, if you could do the setup work yourself. That, if you're talking about 100 quid plus 75 or 50 or whatever much you get somebody to pay, uh, charge, a Luthia might charge to get it set up, you start to think, well, actually I could go and find myself something else or save a little bit more. Um, so if they don't address this quality issue, uh, if it's even possible, I think they're going to lose lose out and we'll probably find that it's not not really worth the difference anymore. Anyway, um, got some, uh, I know we've got, we've got some shed work to do. Um, I'm going to build some another shelf at the back there, so I'm going to need to take some of those amps out just now. Uh, I'm going to get Thomas involved in that. And once we've done that, we're going to build the new workbench, uh, hopefully on a level with this one, under there. Uh, and then we've got to, oops, sorry, there's our upright. Um, and then it's going to be stri straight on into uh, radiusing and refretting this creature here. And uh, I've, I've done some cleaning on this body. It's as clean as we're going to get it at the moment. Um, but the pickups are in good nick, they look like they're ready to roll. I've got the knobs in my pocket here, which I've cleaned up. And uh, look forward to getting that one on the move. So, all's looking good. Where shall I put these? What have we got? We've got tone. Tone. Blimey, they're stiff. Oh, oh, Matron, that's stiff. Really know. Different people have different views on where these things go. I'm going to put the ones slightly facing me. As long as they go in the same kind of direction, I think that's what kind of matters the way it looks. Ready, huh? There we are. That's ready to do a bit later on. Um, but it's shelf time first, and that's going to go in the back there. So I've got to take out the the wall of apps, some of which I need to list and get rid of. Um, keep, keep, keep acquiring them every time uh, I get a, a kind of gum tree guitar or something like that. Right, later I'll come back when we're in the middle of doing the uh, workbench.